to God be the glory and praise. Uh, I offer this prayer with thanksgiving and glorifying the Lord God Almighty Yahweh and His Son Jesus Christ for allowing me to see this wonderful dream, uh, the first of August, uh, the first of January, twenty sixteen, and um, it has a lot of context context that we have to be reminded. Uh, in my dream, I saw myself seated on this bench. And the bench where I was sitting, there's a lot of benches surrounding it also. And I noticed a lot of people were seated in there. So, uh, as we are sitting, and there, there's also like a guy seated on the table. Um, if these are all the benches, there's a guy seated on this table. So, anyway... I was seated there and I noticed that my hair was braided. So what I did was, um, and I felt guilty afterwards, I asked slowly take off the braid uh, the, on my hair because I said uh, I want to look, uh, I, I want to look pretty. And that's what I was telling myself. And I'm trying to do it slowly because I know some people are watching me, which is uh, I felt guilty about that because I'm not supposed to be doing that. I always tell myself, I have to remind myself that I want to fix myself only for the eyes of the Lord and for the eyes of my husband. And uh, amen to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So anyway, I was trying to take it off. And then after that, I stood up. Oh, no. I was taking it off and then I saw these kids, it's like Boy Scouts who were seated on that bench. They stood up and they were holding coins. They were holding coins like, I don't know, but it's like two or more of them. They stood up and then the father, father or there's an elderly guy with them and there's young kids, you know, young Boy Scouts. They stood up holding their coins and they bring the coins to the guy seated on the table. So I was, you know, while I was taking my braids off. And then I saw, after what they did, there's another set of Boy Scouts, of young boys, who were seated on the other side of the bench. They also stood up and bring the coins to, to the guy. So, you know, at first I didn't, uh, I was wondering what it is. But in that dream... It's just going flow. It's just flowing, you know. I'm not thinking about the parable of the coin or whatever. So anyway, after I saw those two groups going and giving their money, I stood up and I went to the um, to a iron board. There's an ironing, uh, you know, an iron board uh, beside, you know, actually, yeah, there was an ironing board there. I, you know, I'm carrying my clothes with me i don't know how it happened but i was carrying my clothes with me i put it on top of the ironing board i get the iron and i iron it because i noticed there's wrinkles in my clothes uh, i saw the wrinkles and what i noticed was as i ironed the clothes like this i saw like a spot going to my clothes and it widens up if you see like this there's a spot of white it goes on my clothes and then it spread out like that so bright it's unimaginable bright it's brighter as the the light that you can see um it's white white but it's different kinds of different kind of white you can see the spot going in there it's white but it it widens up and it's so bright it's so bright so i was wondering while i was ironing it the area that i iron it brightens up there's a spot going in down and the white is just like pearl pearl white so clear so nice so then after that i as i was finishing the iron you know, I later I saw that the electric wire, uh, you know, just explode in the socket. So uh, I pray to God that I, that He will finally take all the wrinkles away from me and really whiten up the clothes I'm wearing in Jesus' name, Yeshua's name. Amen. And I praise God for that. 
So I know it's not only intended for me, but it's for each and every one of us. So when I woke up, I wrote down my dream. I was just up. Uh, at first, I was curious, why is that? Uh, why is why am I ironing the clothes? And why is that white? I was thinking, probably I'm making, you know, I'm making sin against the Lord that I have the spots. But I was thinking, the spots is white and it's making it, you know, so clear and clean. And I remember the, the, the wrinkles, the, you know, and the coins. I said, I know the Lord is trying to tell me something. So now I made a research about um, the coins and the wrinkles because I was trying to research about the ironing of clothes. There's none. But I remember about the word wrinkle and then the, the white as, you know, the bright white. So now um, I found out in Ephesians 5 verse 21, Submit to one another of reverence for Christ. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands, as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body of which is the Savior. Now, as the church submit to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husband in everything. Husband, love, loves you, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church, and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word, and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish but holy and blameless. In the same way, husband ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated their own body, but they feed and care for their body, just as Christ does the church. This actually reminded me when I was uh, trying to remove the, the braid on my hair, because I said I, try to, I want to look pretty. Because my husband always tells me, Honey, I want you to look pretty for me. If you love the Lord, you, you have to love me the way you love the Lord. And uh, I've been, you know, um, I, I just realized that uh, way, way, uh, several months ago or probably years ago. But uh, this past few months, I actually have a reflection that if we walk in righteousness with the Lord, we have to carry ourselves properly and godly. And... Uh, We've been trying to do that. I know brothers and sisters in Christ, you've been doing the same thing. But at the same time, you wives, I tried to be submissive to my husband. At first, it's really very hard to agree. But you know what? When the Lord is above everything, it will be easy. I tell you, it will be easy. All you have to do is just pray together as a couple as a family and most of all as a couple whenever you have a decision to make whenever you plan something offer it to the Lord and then whenever you get mad about the behavior of one another close your eyes and pray and say Lord Jesus you told me I need to be submissive to my husband and I need to understand him give me the strength and the understanding to accept and love him and whatever mistake he's doing offer it to the Lord if you notice that something is wrong in him offer it to the Lord and I tell you I'm one of the living witness to that we prayed I prayed so much about myself you know the things that I need to change in order to be uh, to be fully with follower of the Lord and I prayed for my husband to change according to God's will and honestly you can see the literal and spiritual change and that's what we're supposed to do wives we're not supposed to fight because you're not fighting against your husband you're fighting against the spiritual um, 
schemes that are covering each and every one of us. But if we finally found the Lord, we rebuke those demon schemes and they're not going to be with us because our body is fully with the Lord. We surrender ourselves to the Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua. And as soon as we surrender ourselves to God, to Jesus Christ, we ask for the for the presence of the Holy Spirit to cover us. And the Lord, including the Holy Spirit, is agreeing with me right now. I'm having these goosebumps. The Holy Spirit agrees. We need to ask the Holy Spirit to come into our lives. And He will guide us. He is our teacher to tell us, to give us the understanding and the discernment of what is right and what is wrong. Praise be to you. Lord God, Yahweh, Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit, thank you. So we can prepare ourselves not to have any wrinkle or stain at all. You know, we have to be faithful to our husband. We have to be faithful and at the same time to be submissive to them. As for God sent His Son Jesus, and Jesus actually... Uh, Bless the head of the household, which is the man. And we are next to our husband. And you, mother and father, will be the guide to your children. God bless each and every one of us. So go to Revelation 19, verse 7 to 8. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory. For the wedding of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. Fine linen stains for the righteous acts of God's people. <laughs> this, is, this dream is just amazing. Praise God. I was ironing this linen, these clothes, that, that all the wrinkled will be gone. And then I can see the spot which is very bright turning this linen into bright white. And so we, brothers and sisters in Christ, the bridegroom is coming soon and he's getting ready for all of us. He showed me the wedding of the Lamb. I was walking in there. If you haven't seen that dream of mine, please, please, for the glory of God. It's not about me. It's about the Lord. He showed me how we wear our wedding clothes and how we have to be watchful in every step that we're going to make. So we're not going to stumble and fall. He showed me how the wedding aisles is so long. The multitudes of people from the right and left that are shining so bright. And how we reach the, the uh, wedding banquet. I tried the food. And uh, we are going to rejoice because we will be called one by one. One by one, by the Lord God Almighty. And now this is the connection. I am now ironing the clothes so to get the wrinkles off and to make it spotless. So it will be white and clean. And you see, people were called, the children will call, were called by this guy on the table to present the coins. What are these coins? This is the righteous acts that we children of God are doing. Remember the Lord said, He is the vine and we are the branches. And we are supposed to bear fruits. Without Him, we can't bear fruits. Without the Holy Spirit, without Jesus Christ, we can't bear fruit. We have to bear fruit for the kingdom of God. It's like the parable of the gold coins. So go to Revelation 19 to 14. The armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen, white and clean. So we will be going with Jesus Christ, riding in white horse with our fine linen clothes. First Peter 3 verse 3. Your beauty should not come from outward adornment, such as elaborate hairstyles and wearing of gold jewelry, and find clothes the Lord is just reminding us our beauty that's why I was taking it off because I said I want to look beautiful 
But the Lord is reminding us, our beauty is not coming from the outside. It's not, it's not the way the sexy clothes or whatever clothes we're wearing. It's actually the inside. Because if the beauty is inside, it's radiating. Okay, the light is shown. And people can see it through you. The way you speak, the way you talk, the way you carry yourself, and the way you deal with people. It's not just saying, hey, you know, you're so pretty. I've noticed a lot of people who are just saying, you're beautiful, you're nice. But then when they turn around, they roll their eyes. And then they will say, no, they're not. It's not that. It's not just you're admiring people and saying nice things to them, but deep inside you don't mean it. That's not right. Even if you pray, you mean what you say. Because what comes out in your mouth is coming from your heart. So if you don't mean what you say, it's lies. It means you have full of lies in your body. You have to get rid of that in Jesus' name. You need to prepare yourselves. So what is the parable of the gold coins? The parable of the gold coins, which is in Luke 19, verse 11 to 27. While the people were listening to this, Jesus continued and told them a parable. He was now almost at Jerusalem, and they supposed that the kingdom of God was just about to appear. So he said, There was once a man of high rank who was going to a country far away to be made king. After which he planned to come back home. Before he left, he called his ten servants and gave them each a gold coin and told them, See what you can earn with this while I am gone. Now his own people hated him, and so they sent messengers after him to say, We don't want this man to be our king. The man was made king and came back. At once he ordered his servants to appear before him in order to find out how much they have earned. The first one came and said, Sir, I have earned ten gold coins with the one you gave me. Well done, he said. You are a good servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will put you in charge of ten cities. The second servant came and said, Sir, I have earned five gold coins with the one you gave me. To this one he said, You will be in charge of five cities. Another servant came and said, Sir, here is your gold coin. I kept it hidden in a handkerchief. I was afraid of you because you are a hard man. You take what is not yours and reap what you did not plant. He said to him, You bad servant, I will use your own words to condemn you. You know that I am a hard man taking what is not mine and reaping what I have not planted. Well then, why didn't you put my money in the bank? Then I would have received it back with interest when I return. Then he said to those who were standing there, Take the gold coin away from him and give it to the servant who has ten coins. But they said to him, Sir, he already has ten coins. I tell you, he replied, that to those who have something, even more will be given. But those who have nothing, even the little that they have, will be taken away from them. Now, as for those enemies of mine who did not want me to be their king, bring them here and kill them in my presence. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be to you, Yeshua, Jesus Christ. You know, people are wondering. I know uh, there's a mocker who told me, keep your dream to yourself. The prophets and the apostles and a lot of people in the, in the Bible has received dreams from the Lord. And it, uh, the Lord even spoke to us in Revelation that at the end times, young and old will have dreams and have visions. At first, I was wondering about the dreams that, the, that I've been seeing in my dreams after I've been seeing the Lord. Whenever He shows me dream, the following day it happened, even at my workplace, my family, and my personal life. Sometimes it happens a week, a month, and uh, I just realize he's telling me things. And if he's telling me things, I want to share it to all of you. Because this is not only for me, it's also for all of us. 
just like the gold coins the lord entrusted me with the dreams to remind us and to warn us that the time is near when we can find him repent with all your heart repent with all your heart when you repent don't look back don't look back look forward walk in righteousness with the lord so we will be fine blameless all the wrinkles will be gone so we will be spotless in the eyes of god the lord entrusted us with his words go and multiply i'm saying this to all of you whatever the lord entrusted you go and multiply you need to plant the seed to whoever listens let their ears open so they can hear to whoever sees let their eyes open so they can see but if they repute they refuse we are leaving them we leave them in their own hands the lord knows okay we need to plant the seed we need to preach the word of god to whoever believes, believe not on my words, but by the word of God. Jesus is true. He said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word will never pass away. His word is alive and true. And it's applicable in our life. It's alive. It's telling us to repent. He gave us the coin. Even one, two, five, ten coins that he entrusted us. Make it multiply. Plant the seed. He said we should be fishers of men. Go and use that coins to whoever you meet. Even at the stores, the church, the school, the workplace. It doesn't matter. Go and multiply. The Lord be with you. He will watch over you. The Holy Spirit will be with you to speak through you. And don't worry. He will watch over you until the time is right. If we're meant to die with the sword, we will die with the sword. If we were meant to die with the captivity, we will be captives. But if we were meant to die on our sleep, to be called by the Lord God, we will die through that. The Lord knows. Only the Lord, only the Lord knows. So, brothers and sisters in Christ, the Lord give you the coin. Multiply. Multiply for the glory of God. You wives, be submissive to your husband. Be obedient and read the Bible together. Pray together for the glory of God. Remember, the Lord made men and women to be to marry, and they will become one. And you will be one with the Lord. And bless this by the word of God. Pray together to glorify the Lord. And with you together in one with the Lord. With the Holy Spirit in you. You can guide and lead your children to the righteous path. Be the righteous mom and dad for your children. So you can bring them together to heaven in Jesus mighty name. God bless each and every one in Yeshua's name. Amen. Shalom.